everybody just back with another video i just have a couple quick videos that i want to uh, react and share with you guys it's basically just more pierre polyev just destroying uh liberal the liberals uh, hard drug policy and their theft policy or anti-theft policy if you want to say so let's have a look and then we'll talk about it after like usual now we're scanning one percent shipping containers that leave the port of montreal that's where your stolen car went by the way if you're wondering where it went it went to montreal got it in a box got it on a ship middle east africa or europe uh, that's because we don't scan the shipping containers so we're going to scan the containers and if the manifest says it's widgets the scanner says it's a beamer well it's probably a stolen car so we'll take that box we'll put it aside we'll pull it out we'll match the bin the owner will call them and say hey were you sending your beamer off to uh beirut no i wasn't uh, i was planning to just hop into a photo work oh well it's in the port of montreal so you might want to come again uh that's how you're going to stop the demand is this shit very simple it's part of what every other country does yeah and you know again you know it's you get a stolen car it gets taken up to montreal like Pierre said, and then it gets put on a on a boat in a shipping container, and you never see it again. Now, currently, they're not scanning these these shipping containers; they're just letting them go. And this is another reason as to why you do not have a soft approach on crime, because the the softer the approach, the easier it gets for these criminals to commit these crimes, and not only commit them once, commit them over and over and over again, and then they never get caught. And I'm sure if they do get caught, they probably get out of jail pretty quickly, right? Or the the fine, there's probably no fines for that. That's you know that's it's a pretty big theft. But even you know for smaller theft, the fine probably isn't very big. It seems like this government just every time you commit a crime, they go, oh well, you know we need to help this person. And you know I'm not against helping people, you know, reform from being criminals. But that being said, you know you do the the crime, you got to do the time. And that's not what's happening here, right? We're just seeing people, I mean, there are people who have committed murder and they're out of jail. Well, the time for murder most of the time is 25 to life and that's what you should be doing. Can't have you in society if you're doing that. We can't have you a part of society if you're stealing cars back to some major crime organization overseas. It's just, it's not right. And, you know, that's why a lot of people are getting really pissed off because I mean, this isn't the only problem here that we have in Canada, but I mean, geez, car th how much is car thefts up right now? Like how many percentile is it up? It's, it's insane. And all this government really wants to do about it is nothing. Pierre Polyev wants to come in and scan these shipping containers and then, you know, look up the VIN number, match it with the person, uh, with the the car owner and then say hey come get your car and i'm sure you know if it's if they're in toronto or something and it's been taken all the way up to montreal they probably work with you to get it back to you and whatever but the current system we are in now is just it's, it's not working and people are getting pissed off and it's shown in the polls uh this next video i want to show here it's just you know exposing the hard drug policies that have been again destroying canada destroying canadians lives so let's have a look at this one as well Minister has implemented a wacko and radical drug decriminalization and handout program. He's literally handed out tax-funded opioids. The result has been tragic, a nearly tripling in the number of overdose deaths. And where the policy has been most deeply implemented in three, uh, in BC, a three hundred percent increase in overdose deaths. Prime Minister did a last-minute reversal on decriminalization in that province only to vote back in favor of decriminalization yesterday isn't it his plan to decriminalize across canada if he's re-elected yeah and you know that's the problem he, justin trudeau does not want to just do this in one province they want this all across canada and again no they are not stupid enough to think that those policies work but they are evil enough to want to destroy canadians lives and that's what they want to do and again he's either evil or he's stupid so, well, he's not evil. He's just an idiot. Well, then why are you voting for him? I mean, you know, like, there, there's just so, there's no reason left to vote for this guy. Crime, inflation, housing prices, the, uh, the rent prices. And uh, you can go, and not just violent crime, it's every kind of crime. 
People can't afford anything here. People are scared to, you know, walk around at night because, well, the, the person who, you know, stabbed somebody or viciously hurt somebody a few weeks ago could be back on the street again. Canadians are scared to be in their own country. They're scared to go outside at night. It's summertime. People go out at night. You don't see it as much anymore. At least not where I live. And I live pretty close to the center of a pretty big city. And, it, you know, not a whole lot going on. And, you know, the, the thing about these, you know, you know bringing some, a policy like this across Canada, it was so bad in BC, there was a 300% increase in overdose, tripling the, the, the overdose rate. What's that going to be like in Toronto? What's it going to be like in Montreal? What would it be like here in Hamilton? I mean, and if you destroy every big city, the rest of the country is going to go down with it. The, the big cities is where the, a lot of the economy is produced. You're going to make people just want to leave the city. And yeah, okay, maybe we can move somewhere else, but then they'll, they'll destroy, wherever you move, they'll destroy that city too, or that town. I mean, this is what I mean. And people say, well, you know, the WEF has nothing. Listen, they've admitted they've infiltrated the Liberal Cabinet of Canada. And they clearly have a lot of influence on Canada. The carbon tax crap that they keep talking about. Let's keep increasing the taxes, but we're not going to actually do anything about, about climate change. Nothing he's tried has worked. Wasn't the last year the, the, the most deadliest uh, year or that they had the most fire uh, forest fires in Canadian history? Why is it getting worse under your under your leadership, Justin? It's a question I think even more can most Canadians are asking that question, but I think we start need to ask it a little bit more, don't we? It, it's getting ridiculous in our climate, inflation, housing market, renting market, groceries, gas prices, not to mention stupid policies like being soft on crime and decriminalizing extremely hard drugs. A stupid person might do something like that, but then reverse it. An evil person will do it, see that it's destroying a country, and then keep going. That's the difference between stupid and evil. And Justin Trudeau, my friends, is very evil. So that's going to be it for uh, today's video, guys. I also wanted to let you know that I am uh, also now consistently more on Rumble. They were having a bunch of problems um, allowing me to upload videos, and they weren't syncing my YouTube channel. Now they've stopped that altogether, but I have uh, been up updating and uploading videos onto Rumble as of the last few days. So check me out at The Damn Freeman Show. It's the same uh, logo, same name, so it should be easy to find me, and I'll see you all there. Uh, thanks again so much for watching, guys. That's going to be it for today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps and grows this channel, and I'll see you next time.